Hey everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Mask. I'm one of your co-hosts, EJ, and Lori Hello. is joining me today. Unfortunately, T was unable to be here, but she'll be back in upcoming episodes. This episode is episode 14, which we're calling The Masks of Loneliness, which is ironic because Lori is sitting in my living room while we're talking about this. <laughs> hey everybody, it's EJ from the future. So this episode was actually recorded back in September, and we've had it in our back pocket until now because we thought it went well with the podcast from um, episode 13 so we are gonna share it with you now i think we all go through different stages of loneliness throughout our lives depending on the situations we're in so we're just gonna kind of chat a little bit about it maybe a little bit of a heavier topic but hopefully you guys can be encouraged and maybe find a little nugget of some good stuff out of it so you know we're made to be social creatures of some way shape or form so like when we are alone or we're isolated we can start to feel lonely and not feel like we're connected to things um especially in the middle of pandemics yeah but but not so much that like long before we had the pandemic you know being alone like for me i was not living with my parents anymore my mom had passed away so i was lonely from not having my mom and you know my dad had, was in a skilled nursing facility and some of my friends i only stay connected to online because they live far away so like it's a living where like where i choose to live or where i'm living and they're living or i just became an empty nester because i was a mom right. and my youngest son just moved out yeah. about six months ago right. you know yeah um and and yes now because of the pandemic we've got things like you know we're um those who are vaccinated those who are not vaccinated and so you know i know people who because of like they don't want anybody in their life that doesn't have the vaccine so like they're choosing that and so some of those people might be isolated or because of people like Lori and i who have chronic illnesses compromised immune systems right um you know we really shouldn't be out and about too much so that can kind of feel isolating yeah. or limit the people you're around to just your select few you trust yes which yes. is what you should be doing anyways but you never know you know and then like for some people like social media and then that can be isolating because like i'm in fandom so i know people but like if you get into like a show or something you like and you find like fellow topics sometimes you feel alone like you're the only one in it but then you start looking around and then you find more people that are into it but those relationships are kind of surfacey so like you still are kind of like disconnected from the world and you know when our church was meeting online only it made it really challenging to forge relationships except with those handful of people that i talked with on a like a daily or weekly basis we already had the foundation and the friendships mm -hmm. with there. It was a little easier to right. stay connected. Right. But now we cut, we're back into in-person meeting and there's so many new faces and I don't even know them or where to start. Cause it's like, I haven't had the, the like opportunity. I don't know. So just like when you're at home and you know, I live by myself, you know, I'm a, around people, but like, when I come home, like, do I feel lonely or is it just I'm alone? I, I'm a, I, I won't say antisocial, but I definitely am an introvert. So I recharge by being alone and being in nature and being by myself sometimes. And I'm the exact opposite. Right. Which is ironic that we're friends, but it makes sense yes. too. Yes. Um, I think too, it's important to identify that loneliness cannot just be a physical thing mm -hmm. it can be depression anxiety it can be um we can you know there's that statement that you can be in a crowded room full of people and still feel alone and so i just we can we can have done all the things that we're going to talk about today to combat loneliness and still feel lonely. You can be lonely because you're not married or you're not in a relationship or, you know, you can be lonely because 
your family lives far away or they've passed on. You can be lonely because um, you have you have some things in your life that that just lend itself to that. You there's not as many people into that subject or topic, and so you feel very um, you know um, isolated from from the 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 popular things. Um, and um, so I just think it's important to realize that loneliness isn't just physically being alone. Loneliness is a, a depth of something that is, is emotional, spiritual, and physical. It's mm -hmm. got lots of different layers and levels to it. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, we're definitely going to miss some of T's knowledge on the, you know, trauma and the brain and, you know, all of those psychological responses and, and effects. And I know we often say this at the beginning of, of our podcast, but please, please, please always remember that there are professionals to help with some of these things, especially when, and we are not, we are not those. We are literally just sharing our opinion, sharing our experiences, and we're not counselors. And we're not here to diagnose you or fix you or anything like that. We're just learning how to be our authentic selves out in a kind of public way through the, through the podcast. So I just, I really felt like I needed to remind everybody of that because loneliness we know can lead to things like self-harm, suicide, um, you know, cause great divisions and in our lives that sometimes we just simply feel like we can't overcome them. And so, um, I, and I also want to recognize that that depression and anxiety are sometimes things that are more linked with chemical imbalances and things within our physiology rather than just how we're currently feeling the mood of the day. You know, what side of the bed did I wake up on today? It's not necessarily just what side of the bed you woke up on. And when it comes to stuff like that, never be ashamed and never, never feel like you can't or shouldn't or that you know, to, to ask for help, to connect, and to, if you need to, um, take medications, um, you know, whatever it is that you feel you need to do holistically and, and medicinally to get your body in, you know, moving in a, in a direction that you really want to go, but you don't know how to do it on your own. So just really think it's important to, yeah. to bring that up. As, as EJ said, this is uh, uh, a little heavier topic and, and one that, but something that I'm learning and growing in um, a lot. Um, I, as I've said, I'm a social creature. I'm an extrovert. I thrive and grow and and am replenished, if you will, through my social interactions and due to things like COVID and sheltering in place and social distancing, um, due to being a new empty nester, due to, um, you know, I realized for the first time that physically, that I'm, I'm alone, living alone for the very first time in my life. I went from being 18 and engaged and then being married. I didn't have any real time, even as a young adult, to physically be alone. I didn't go off to college on my own. I did college as a young married, you know, the first part of college. And then, you know, um, you know, 
years later I have two children and I'm divorced and now I'm still not alone because as many of you have experienced and know, being a single mom with children is definitely not being alone. You alone time, like you actually crave some alone time and you just can't find it. You know, um, it's just not exactly the most easy thing to accomplish when you're a single mom and or dad. And um, uh, it's it's just a difficult thing. Um, sometimes we're more alone and we've talked about this, EJ and I have, and, and in our Embracing Our Thorns group that we're a part of, we talk about loneliness that can come along with chronic illness because we can't do some of the things that we used to do physically. We, we can't, it's absolutely exhausting or physically not possible to go salsa dancing or go on the hike with everybody else mm. or some days it's just hard to get out of bed and that creates isolation loneliness you know um so then i you know so i was concentrating on being being a single parent and then i i got really sick and had to become a dependent of my own one my oldest son you know when he was in the Marine Corps and and that was a very different experience but again not alone I needed help and he was there and um, you know so still not alone and then when he got engaged that's you know about the time EJ that you came into my life just a little before that and when he moved out and you know we had a sister household we had mm -hmm. you know and so again, I wasn't alone. Yeah. And then I was living with other people in the church. And then I was, and then I came back to living over here with my youngest son, wonderful opportunity. But again, I'm not alone. I'm not physically alone. And all of a sudden, what, six months ago, I woke up and went, there's not a single other human being in this house in my my adorable fabulous little condo but oh man it really did feel like the gilsey cage that i talk about due to so many things and i things that you think you've dealt with or that you thought you could handle I've always had issues with the dark you know um, for you know specific reasons um, being alone makes me feel vulnerable um, even if it's not necessarily true I've been talking with my counselor about that um, oftentimes when we're alone we're actually safer um, um, but you know, it's just, you know, in the last episode, we talked about authentic relationships and we talked about things that we desire, right? And I definitely am, am loving those authentic relationships, but I've just been, so I really kind of went into panic mode. I, I mean, you know, I, I reached out to you, EJ, I've reached out to, you know, M and T and, and, you know, just Tim and, and all these people in my life and just have been like, how do you people do this? I don't like this. I really don't. Like, I'm like, I've been a fish out of water. I've been just mm -hmm. been crawling up the walls. I have, so I have learned I have to have music playing and I know we're going to go into some things about helping with loneliness later, but I've learned for me that there are certain things I have to do. Too much absolute quiet and silence is literally one of the most unnerving things to me ever. So I, I really, I'm learning to respect and um, just be in awe of my friends who live alone. I, I just had no idea what it was like until now, and. So here I am trying to figure it out. And that's one of the reasons we're 
talking about the mask of loneliness, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think for me, um, I definitely can be feeling lonely in certain parts of my life. Um, You know, as I've said in the past, I am an only child. So there was the loneliness of not having a sibling in the household. Um, Grateful I had both my parents, you know, in the house. My grandmother lived with us for a while, my mom's mom. Um, <clears throat> so there's always somebody around, but again, you know, didn't have that lonely. So I, I had a few close friends in the neighborhood, so I'd hang out with them. Um, you know, and then I had friends through high school and stuff, but then as I got older and, you know, I graduated high school, I was kind of struggling at the end of, my grandmother passed, my, um, my dad's mom passed away in 98, my grandmother passed away in 2001, my mom's mom, and then I graduated high school in 2002, so it's like I'd had a lot of loss in my, like, later school years so then I just I I was to a point where I was kind of I think at the time as I think back now I realized I was depressed back then and um I wasn't really interested in going to school but I really wasn't interested in doing anything else so I ended up going to community college and so I had a few classmates and you know and then we I got a job and I started working and so I had people around and I was living at home I wasn't ready to move out of my family's home, even though I was old enough and I was making good money at the time. I should have, you know, I could have moved out. I just chose not to because I didn't want to move out of my parents' house. And I didn't need to. And then, you know, as I got older and stayed at home and then my mom got sick and dad had his, was dealing with some stuff. We were, so my dad's from, you know, the Midwest. He's from Minnesota. Um, and most of his siblings don't live or live in Minnesota or those who are still alive, I should say. Um, and he has some siblings in the South too. Um, but it's, they weren't physically here. So when my mom and dad got really sick, especially for the last maybe six months to a year of her life, there were like two close, uh, female family friends that we had that were really around, but I just kind of felt disconnected from life. Um, I didn't per se feel lonely because my parents were there, but I, I've kind of said this and explained before that I kind of felt like I went from being an only child to a single parent of two. Yes. And while like, I don't regret anything I, I did for my parents. Um, it was a huge change and shock for me. Um, so I actually can relate to single parents sometimes when they feel like, Oh, I got to take so-and-so to here and I got to do this and they got adoption appointment. You know, I can understand that because I did it for about two years or so. And then when my mom passed away, you know, I can't just pick up the phone and say, Hey mom, what's that pepper pot stew recipe? How did you make that? Because, of course, she never wrote anything down. Um, (laughs) You know, so there's the loneliness of not having her. And then um, it was just me and my dad for a while. Then he got sick and went into the skilled nursing facility. Or he lost his other leg and went into the skilled nursing facility. And then he was there. So then I I was kind of forced over that kind of year after my mom passed away to really, in a way, I guess, reevaluate where I was in life. And then... We did move in together and, you know, you and I, the apartment together with another sister and kind of had some, um, did that for a while and we lived somewhere else for a while and then we separated and I just, it was a big shock for me just moving out, but it did feel alone. Like I was like, man, I like, I don't know what, what am I doing? Like, cause I was so used to being in one spot and I know we've talked and I think we talked maybe in the first episode as we were talking about where they'd lived, you know, you and T have moved around quite a bit and yes. I've never moved around. Right. I was born in the town that I grew up in. I think the house that we moved in, that I moved out of in 2015, I'd been in since 1986. Oh my goodness. So and I know what that's like. Yeah. yeah. So I had like 30, well, 27 years or so in one house. Oh and goodness. so I think that was a big shock for me to just move, you know, and then recently I dealt with losing my dad. So like in the general scheme of things, I am an orphan. I know you said that the other day 
And I was like, I was trying to process when you said that. And, oh, because I, yeah, because we sang a song at church one weekend that was, that there was a, a line and it says like, makes the orphan a son and daughter. Yes. Yeah. And that I was, was interesting. Like, trying to process that and, and I'm, I'm like, but wait, you're not an orphan. You know, cause I, because I feel like we're sisters. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so funny because, you know, so many people are like, so are you guys related? You I know. know. You? <laughs> <laughs> I still get that. I know. I, and T and I've had that too. People are like, you, you guys are sisters, right? Like, <laughs> Cause no, we, no. We're, yeah, we get along but so well. We, yeah, we do act like that and we do operate, I guess, if you will, that way. Um, but I really am beginning to understand, you know, just the, the, the feelings of loss yeah. and the feelings of, you know. Well, and I, and I think that's what comes with the, um, the difference between like sympathy and empathy. Like yes. one, you can understand, but you've never really been through it. So you just kind of like on the surface understand, but then yeah. like there's the other one where you actually like really physically understand it. Yes. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, definitely like it's weird cause I can't pick up the phone and call my dad and be like, Hey, how do I do this again? Right. But on the other hand, a silver lining from the pandemic was there was 14 months where I couldn't go over to my dad's on a regular basis. Yes. So I at least got some time to get used to it. Cause I like, literally we were just talking about this this morning that I like, I had like maybe two weeks to prepare for my mom to pass away. Right. So like she was there and then she was gone. Right. My dad like abruptly. Abruptly. Well, I mean, she, I knew she was sick. I knew she had cancer. So, like, I knew it was coming. Just like with my dad, I knew it was coming. But this, like, literally for my dad just came up out of nowhere. Right. And then I'd been away from him physically for 14 months because right. of the pandemic and his facility and the state's laws and stuff about, right. like, facilities. You couldn't right. have visitors and all right. that. So, I slowly, like, prepared myself to be away physically but now, like, the not being able to pick up the phone and call him has been, you know, a challenge. But, like, I like coming home to an empty house. Like. I need more of this. What? You <laughs> like coming home to an empty house? Explain this to me. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Well, because, I, so I like that. Okay. So, there, so there's two sides of this. Because I love coming into my own house. Because it's mine. Right. All my okay. stuff is Got on that. The, like, all my stuff is here. Like, you know, I, you know, the stuff I have on the walls are things I like. You know, the plants I have are plants I like. Right. I've chosen it. Fridge, I don't have to worry back. about so-and-so, you know, like, eating my last such-and-such. Such. <laughs> um, I don't have to worry about somebody using my pan using a non a fork and a nonstick pan <laughs> <laughs> little things like that amen amen yes um, yes those things we deal with when we have roommates and partners and right you know, yeah so stuff. yes but then the sucky thing is also clutter causes me anxiety so if you haven't known me or been into my house, you know that it's got a lot of stuff. And as I was just <laughs> saying, the house that we I moved out of, which I didn't say was a 2,600 square foot house that I had to downsize on my own. Right. Made it very challenging and I've had to carry around all that stuff. I have gotten rid of some stuff, but I still have a lot to go. And I'm so I, proud of you. I need to get rid of a lot more. But I'm working on it. But... I see that, and so it's like, I enjoy coming home because I can do what I want when I want. I can sit down and play on the computer if I want, I can do some writing, I can do all that, I can turn music on and I don't have to worry about it in conflicting with somebody else in the room or the house that's maybe listening to something else. Um, where the loneliness does come in is that there's nobody here to talk to. Yeah. But then I start talking to myself, which... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm learning new things. <laughs> but, okay, so I know this these used to be like a joke of like, oh, you're talking to yourself. Well, that's dangerous. No, what's 
dangerous is when you answer yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. But like, <laughs> I can't tell you how fun it is to be writing something in my novel or a story and literally out loud say the dialogue because I can hear then what sounds good together, what mm. words look good. Oh, that doesn't work. So how can I change that? I couldn't do that if somebody else was in the room. It would feel a little awkward. And I get, like, and because the, they've said in the past, like, I've heard the term, like, authors are notorious for being lonely. Or it's a lonely profession to be an author. Yes. Because you spend so much time in solitude. Well, yes, because otherwise, how are you going to write? You can't right. write when there's 20 million things going on. Exactly. So I think for me, like, being an author is great because then I can, um, you know, have that as, like, I'm comfortable being alone and stuff. But even so, like, you know, Lori, you were talking earlier about depression and anxiety. I do have that. Both of them. So I have to be mindful of, like, if I'm starting to get anxious, then I need to get up and go do something. And so, you know, whether it's go do dishes or, you know, so so for me right now, I'm having a hard time sitting still. Like, I, I want to be doing something to keep my mind occupied so I don't get, kind of go down that rabbit hole of, oh, what am I going to do? You know, all this stuff. Yes, the woe is me, and, right. and you get in that cycle of depression yeah. and anxiety. You know, and the other, the nice things, you know, per se about living at home by myself is that I can come home and take my clothes off, and I don't have to put any back on if I don't want to. Wow, I really have learned a lot today. Um, <laughs> I'm really glad you're not doing that while I'm here. You know, just it might make yeah, for a little I, awkward time. I have here. some modesty, but thank you. But <laughs> but there have been days where, like, I'm at work and I accidentally spill something on my shirt, and I come home from work and the washer and dryer is right by my front door. So I come home, I take my shirt off, and then I go in my room and change. You know, I, I can do that if there was something. Well, I mean, I could if it was my husband, but right. you know, if there was just a roommate in here, I wouldn't be able to do that. It would feel a little more awkward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's interesting because you brought up a lot of things in there. I, I literally was feeling so uncomfortable with being alone. And, you know, I called, you know, one of my other besties, T, and I'm like, okay, I, I think I need a roommate. I think I need, you know, and... And I love, I love that she doesn't panic with me. I love that she's just like, oh yeah, that might be a great idea. Let's sit down and talk about what you want in a roommate yeah. and what you don't want. And so we start talking about the things I do want. And then we start talking about all the things. And I was like, I don't think I want a roommate. <laughs> I don't think I need a roommate. Never mind, bad idea. Check that off the thing, you know? And it was so great because I don't think unless she and I had processed through that together that I was seeing it as clearly. Right. You know? So I was really grateful for that conversation. Right. You know? Well, and, you know, I was thinking back to when we moved in together. You know, I had moved out of my parents' house. So I had, so I think it was, you had had an apartment with your son, yes. your older son. So you had, like, furniture and everything. Like, I had my bedroom stuff. But I didn't have a lot of household stuff because a lot of the household stuff I had was so old that we just left at the house. Right. Um, and, you know, when it was foreclosed on and that whole other story, um, we, um, I think we ended up setting up the household. So we pretty much, the outs, like, the, the core of the house was your stuff. That's true. And then the kitchen was mostly my kitchen gadgets and whatnot because like, you didn't have as much because you were giving it to your son or something like yes, that. Yes, and I also avoid the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you figured I should be comfortable in my kitchen with my son. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, so I was thinking, I remember we had this conversation, or all, more like a, you snapped at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I did. We, it was like maybe five to six months of living there. I hadn't put a single picture up on the wall. And you had neither in the living room. And you finally snapped and you're like, you guys will not put anything up on a wall. I don't understand it. And you were just like flipping out. And I was like, you know, I was like, it's a wall, whatever. Like, I don't care. And I, and then you're like, and you hadn't put stuff up because you didn't want to put something up. I was trying up. not to take over the household. Right. You know. And then like, for me, like I have my stuff in my room and I was like, whatever, you know. But And you're like, I was like, just put up over whatever you want. You know, I, I don't care. I'm like, it's just a picture on a wall. But I remember, like, you were 
kind of going stir crazy with just blank walls yeah, because you were used to having things on the walls and stuff like that. I, that, like, yeah, sure, when I was a kid, I had posters all over the wall. And then, you know, we had p p pictures in the house, some that I kind of wish I would have grabbed on the way out. Um, so t going back to you stayed in the same place, right? Yeah. One of the things that I was taught and also that I learned, if you're somebody who moves a lot, I literally can move and have a house unpacked in less than 72 hours and stuff on the walls. So why haven't you unpacked my storage room yet? Probably because I'm trying to respect your space and need to process as you go through those things. Whereas I would just donate it all and move on and you would cry and wonder what I did. And our friendship but, might not live but through see, that. Then I have somebody to blame for getting rid of it and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten better. I have been getting rid of stuff. Yes. But one of the things that, that I was taught and that I learned was that how you make that, that house a home is by immediately getting that stuff up on the walls. And, and see, I wasn't ready to make that place a home because I had just come out of my home. That yes. was home for me. Right. Like so it, you didn't even know what to do with the right. space we were in because you couldn't yeah. even process all that yeah. stuff, you know? Well, because it, it did kind of happen. I mean, granted. And to our other room, and it didn't seem like it was as important either. Right. So, whereas for me, I'm like, I can't have a home. I can't until I claim the space. Right. If you will, you know. Yeah, and I mean, even when I moved into the place I'm in now, you know, and I'm grateful for the place. I love the place that I'm in. It's a great location, great place. Um, it took me a while to put stuff up on the walls. Yes. Yes, um, it did. But that was more so, like, I didn't know what I wanted to... And I think that was even back in the apartment, like, I didn't know what to put up there. Like, I didn't know if I wanted to put, like, a theme or if I wanted to do something specific. And, you know, you, of course, you, like, grow up watching, like, HGTV and you see them all decorating and stuff. And then it's, like, all this crap they're putting up. And it's, I didn't want frilly... Um, okay, I wouldn't say frilly. I didn't want, like, flashy stuff. Because that's not me. Yeah. So, like, the things I have on my wall are, like, scriptures and, like poems and you know pictures of the ocean and the the footprints poem things that are like meaningful and uh yeah i just i don't know i so but that i like i remember that but and that's a living you know together thing and so we had that it's conflict. also a married thing yeah well we had you hadn't set up a home right as a as a wife whereas that's part of oh gosh if we do the traditional role thing right that's part of what being a, a good young wife was, right? Setting up the home and, and making it ours. And, and definitely, you know, being aware that my husband didn't want, you know, burgundy roses on the wall. You know what I mean? Um, which I wouldn't have put up on the wall anyway, but you get my point. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to create a home that we could both live in, right? right? And then as a parent, you do the same. You... You begin decorating a nursery, right? Yeah. Um, choosing an animal or a theme right. that you hope that they'll like as they grow up and then going on with that. So I think that in some ways, I definitely had much more experience with right. those types of situations yeah. than you. So for me, you're right. It was driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand that we'd been in this home for this long and there wasn't even a picture up on the right. wall. I'm like, is anybody going to claim this space? Is anybody going to make yeah. it a home? You know, right. for and me, that, that's important. Right. And, and you know, and, I, and I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong, but in a way you, that made you feel lonely. It did. I didn't think about it, but probably did. And, and that's kind of what I was getting at with all this is that everybody copes with loneliness differently. Everybody feels lonely. Yes. Um, yes. You differently. know, and like certain things can make us lonely. Like, sure, I want to have a husband in the future. I want to have kids. And so, you know, I don't have that. So I'm missing that right now. Yes. But I am... Uh, as the term says, blue mooring planted. This is, I, this is the season of life I'm in at this moment. I'm trying to make the most out of what it is. You know, and who knows how long this season will last. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm here. I need to make this place a home. Or I want my things out. And I think, like, you know, we had, like, you had your couch. That red couch. Thank God you got rid of that thing. <laughs> you and all the guys who had to move it. They hated that thing. <laughs> 
Or the person who had to fix the wall because you <laughs> because we about took it out as we were trying to get the couch out of the house. Yeah, yeah. That was yes. interesting. We've had some fun moves. Yeah, but you know, and 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 moving is definitely a lonely thing because, like, especially if you've moved, like I moved. It's only forty five minutes away from where I grew up, where we moved to, but like that was a huge move. I went from a, a city of like forty thousand to a city of like two hundred thousand. Right. Right. that's major for me. Like I'm a s small girl, town girl. Yeah. And yeah. so I was not ready for like a big, like I was in the sense of like, like mentally doing it, but like really processing through doing it was yeah. a completely different thing. Yeah. And it took me months to like let go of all that. And now it's like, I was thinking about it because now my dad's passed away and I no longer have to go to that County where, um, you know, he was, which is where I grew up. And I'm like, I don't really need to go over there. And that kind of was like, wow. Cause that's definitely growth because it's, yeah. I'm beginning. Right. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm trying to process through the fact that like, I have no need to go over there now. Yeah. My, I mean, I know where my grandparents are buried over there. So yeah, I could go visit their graves, but like, what else? Yeah. I have friends, you know, over there and some family, you know, I could go visit. Um, and just before my dad passed away, a friend of mine that lived in Port Orchard where he was, um, just moved to this side of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And I was thinking kind of as a joke, cause the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, I don't know if anybody knows, but, um, has a pretty hefty toll coming from Gig Harbor to Tacoma. Um, and it's actually going up on October 1st. So Ooh. I'm like, gosh, this just keeps getting going up and up. I, I could have sworn we paid this off years ago. But anyways, um, you know, because it gets pricey. And I'm like, but now I don't have to go over there. Like, unless I go for a specific thing. There's not thing. that need yeah, to drive, and, if you and will. I'm like, because you know? I always said I'm always going to go back to, you know, my hometown. And I'm like, do I want to? Is that going to mean me anymore? Because the same things that I had issues with back then, I'm going to have then, you know, in the future. Yes. Um, you know, cause it's a very small community and I like, there wasn't the opportunities that the area I'm in now has. Right. So I feel like it wouldn't really be feasible or wise for me or to go back there. Yeah. So like I've had to kind of process through that of, you know, that one time I used to feel lonely and, you know, longing for that. I don't long for anymore. Mm. So, like, in loneliness, you'll go through seasons of different things. Like, yes, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm lonely because I don't have my parents around, but I'm blooming where I'm planted. I have them around with me, you know? So, one of the things that we're talking about and you and I are discovering in this conversation is that sitting with loneliness rather than denying or running away from it yeah. provides validation, self-compassion. Yeah. It allows us to begin to find value. Self-discovery. Yes. In spending time with oneself. And so there's, there is benefit to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'm trying to learn that and I'm trying to get comfortable with it. Um, if you will. So, and this kind of ties into our, you know, our next topic, which is, you know, coping, like how do we cope? Because right. yeah, cause I mean, coping is a big thing because, you know, like as Lori was saying, like, and what she's done is great because she's contacting people, people who have, are living on their own, who've been doing it a while. And, you know, she's being point, like, I, I think I remember pointing out, uh, Lori, you realize you are now an empty nest and you never have been. Like, this is the first time you've lived without your kids. Yep. Like, both, because, you know, when you moved back to Spokane, you were living with a son. And then, you know, he's moving on with his life and he's got a relationship and they're moving in together. And so now this is like the first time since you graduated high school that you've been on your own. And can do anything you want in your own home without his friends popping up and like, Oh, I'm not wearing a shirt, but your friend just popped up there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's been nice. You know? Um, so that's the 
kind of leads us into that next conversation is how do we deal with it? How do we um, cope with it? So one of the ways, I mean, and we've identified, you and I both write. So writing, writing has been a massive way, uh, an easy way for me to, to, um, once I wasn't running away from it, once I wasn't denying it and freaking out about it and being afraid of it, then I could process it through writing, journaling, Mm -hmm. um, thinking of new story ideas, connecting with our writers group, you know, um, so writing has probably been my greatest ally and because it helps me to process. Um, probably the other thing, and I know we brought this up in our first episode where we talked about things that we liked and things that bring us joy and, and stuff like that. I've been listening to more audible so that I can have somebody else talking and, (laughs) and, um, besides myself talking to myself, I'm not quite ready to go there yet. Um, I don't do it all the time, but it is fun. I, 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 I'm going to have to work on that. Yes. Um, so I've been listening to audible more, but the other thing I've been listening to is more music. And for me constantly having my hub, you know, I'll be like, okay, Google, play, you know, Danny Goki, play Mandisa, play Peter Hollins, you know. Gee, what's Mandisa have for a song? Yeah. You're an overcomer. Yes, yes, I'm an overcomer. So I'm trying to embrace that and remember that and, you know, overcome this new Stay thing. until the fight. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. I, <clears throat> so I've been using music as a huge tool to not feel as alone. And I I have this, um, a new friend in my life who I met online, who is a poet. And- um, He's a poet and you didn't even know it. Ha ha ha. Thank you for that pun. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I have I'm this new friend that, <laughs> <laughs> that I reached out to, right? And he's a poet and I'm kind of trying my hand at some poetry. I don't think I'm ever going to be a poet. Um, I, I don't think that I have that lyrical sense that I think good poets just naturally have, but it has been fun to explore. It has been fun to, to just allow myself to be a little more free and less structured. Um, um, with my, with my writing and, um, and then photography, photography has, you know, it's so amazing because it's helping me reframe, Mm -hmm. helping me find something else to focus on. I'm using all of these, um, helping you see things in a different way, things in a different way and in a new light and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So photography is helping me find some joy in, in that solitude to do something kind of useful with it, you know? So I would say, so anyway, those are the things that I have been using to, to kind of cope, if you will, with, and of course, counseling, reaching out, I'm trying to, um, but I, I have a, a couple of good friends who, uh, recently moved that was another area that I was able to identify why I was struggling with loneliness because these two particular people in my life, brother and sister, friends of mine, who I really did most of a lot of my socializing with, um, a lot of my physical going out into society, if you will, and, you know, going to a movie, um, we'd have, you know, basketball nights. We all like the zag. So we would, you know, have these, you know, nights where we would get together and just talk football, uh, basketball and, and, you know, sports and all that and fellowship over food, right? Because that's the other thing that we do. And speaking of that, I am lonely. Gosh, another revelation. Oh, I'm feeling lonely. Because 
I didn't know that I didn't know how to fellowship when it wasn't centered around food. Oh my goodness. Just <clears throat> because everything we do in this country has to do with a meal, right. has to do with a celebration, right? It has to well, do with... yeah, I mean, in our, like, even our church body, most of our things is some sort of food. So, like, there's either a meal when you have an event, or there's, like, you have Bible talk, and there's snacks, or right. everything, or there's, and like, they specifically so have a family meal. Me right now. Well, yeah, because we're choosing to change our eating style. <sighs> And lose weight and do something mindful with that. And so it's changed. Yeah, so I can get that. It That's... feels a lot, a lot more lonely and less fellowshipy. You know, yeah, fellowshipy is not a word, but you know what I'm right, saying. Right, yeah. You know, because like, cause I remember like, you know, and it, it, I got a little bit of experience of it when I first didn't have a ton of money coming in. Like when I first got my job, I didn't have a lot of money. So I wasn't spending a lot of money on like going out to eat and stuff. And a lot of times after like Bible talk or midweek, it would be, let's go to dinner. And I got, I stopped doing it because I would go and just get a glass of water or a soda or something so I could be there to like fellowship, but then I would not be buying food. But, <clears throat> you know, and then some people would say, well, if so-and-so, you know, say something and then so-and-so will buy you me, I'm like, no, that's not what I'm doing. Like, I don't need, like, you just wanted the conversation right. and the fellowship. You didn't need the food. But yeah, so a lot of food is centered around a lot of stuff. So it's hard um, you know, for those, anyone of any kind going through any kind of food thing, you know, somebody who's maybe had an eating disorder or, you know, those who are choosing to, you know, change their lifestyle because I refuse to say I'm on a diet because I'm not. Right. We're in lifestyle changes. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a huge thing. And, and oftentimes like when somebody reaches out, Hey, you want to go for coffee? Well, I don't drink coffee. So I find something there that I can drink, which is usually a smoothie or hot chocolate or something like that, which is fine. But you know, again, that's five bucks. It's, you know, money you don't want to spend. And, you know, I think one day we should probably do a, a money, the oh, masks yeah, of definitely. money, masks of money, <laughs> masks, masks of finance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and but yeah, I just had yeah, that revelation that I've been yeah. feeling loneliness less because so much of my fellowship, my friendships were centered in celebratory things in, and even like a study group at school, what do you do? You bring snacks and, mm -hmm. you know, and then you, and I'm trying not to, to have my life centered around right. food or be healthier in how it's involved in my life. And I just realized that that's a new sense mm -hmm. of loss. Well, look how many times in the Bible it talks about Jesus breaking bread with his disciples, right. breaking bread on a daily basis. Right. Right. So it, it that's, it's biblically based but, you know, and it's not that we're not, it's like, we're just choosing to eat different things, you know? And so I think I'm really glad you had that revelation. So my advice to you is to just think that, you know, just because you're going to, you know, there's food going to be involved with, for some people, it doesn't mean you have to eat the same stuff. You know, it doesn't mean you have to eat the same stuff for like, if they, you know, if you order something, you know, you only eat like, cause you know, I know for me, I'm staying away from carbs as much as I can. So like if I order something that has, you know, rice in it, I'll eat less rice or I'll, you know, um, if I order a hamburger, I might not eat the, you know, the bun, um, doesn't mean I'm not there and I'm not having fellowship. So yeah, that, that's really good though. That's, you know, <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's awkward too. Cause like if I have somebody over, the first thing I want to do is be a good host. Right. And I know you do too. Yes. You want to, you know, serve drinks, you know, have a, give them, you know, even if it's offer a bottle of water, do you want something to eat? Can I, you know, are you hungry? Do you need, some? so that's, it's so like as a host too, you know, and I know you, 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 you ever the hostess. Yes. <clears throat> I kind of miss doing that. And you yeah. know, some of that's been, you know, like we've said, culturally living in a pandemic time, mm -hmm. we, we actually get to do so much far less of that. And my home has been my way of connecting and I love to have people in my home. I love to serve people. I love to share a meal, play games, you know, do all of those things. And that's why it's been, I think some of the loneliness has been even more apparent in my life because there are just things that currently right now 
we just can't engage in like we're used to dealing with. So having said that, I think that there are, there were some interesting facts that I found. I always have to have some points, you know me. Um, (laughs) But I found some interesting facts about loneliness and when we're dealing with them, right? So did you know, because I did not, that it is scientifically proven that we will live 50% longer if we are not dealing with loneliness, Mm -hmm. right? If we've, you know, grown in that area and we figured out how to deal with it, right? That those that are not dealing with Mm -hmm. depressing, heavy weighing loneliness actually live 50% longer. It also not being lonely, um, strengthens your immunity. So people that have friends and, and loved ones and all that they're, do, they're doing things with, their immune systems are actually better, stronger. Not dealing with loneliness can reduce anxiety and depression mm-hmm. naturally. No drugs, no <clears throat> medication, no counseling, anything. Just simply not feeling lonely can yeah. reduce those things. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, yes, I have anxiety and depression, but... It's not I don't always connected to loneliness. Right. No, but I don't feel like being by myself at home does not make me feel anxious or depressed. Like, and so I've embraced where I'm at. And so I don't feel like I'm not like, oh my God, I'm so alone here. I don't feel like that. So I don't, so that's not I'm playing. I'm still a, there. Yeah, right. You are. <laughs> so like, I'm, that's not playing a factor in my depression and my anxiety. But yeah, I understand um, that. And then the other really cool benefit is that it increases our um, esteem and our ability to empathize. Mm-hmm. So I think that, so if we know that, right, then what do we do? So what are the practicals? What are the things that we can do um, to to not get bogged down in the heaviness of of loneliness and depression and that goes along with it. Mm. So the number one thing, and it really, uh, it's something that I've been trying to work on in my life in other areas and did not realize that the number one way to combat loneliness is meditation. (laughs) Which requires you to be alone and sit still and be still <laughs> and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, it just kind of blew my mind, you know? So the number one thing to help with loneliness is to be lonely. But the idea of meditation is, first of all, that you are healthily sitting with embracing, um, and being comfortable with peace, with quiet, with loneliness, you know, and, um, yeah. So, um, meditating and, you know, it's interesting. There are, is all kinds of different ways to meditate. Okay. And, you know, um, my, my one professor friend that I talked about earlier, she, um, she does, you know, the, uh, she's a Buddhist. And so they have the, the bowls, right. And the, the sounds and the gongs, right. And then there's these levels of things, right. And if that's what you feel comfortable with, then, and that helps you to meditate, well then do that. You know, um, for me, meditation right now, I'm starting very small and simple. It's about being connected with my body and my breath and breathing. And it's something that, that my counselor and I are working on, you know, and you know, it, I have to start small and I have to start somewhere, you know, um, I do feel like I've learned a while back how to meditate spiritually on scriptures and, you know, things like that. I do feel in my own way 
that my writing time can be meditative for me. Mm-hmm. But but I really am in this journey of being my authentic self and learning how to love myself. If you love something, then you will spend time with it. Then you will connect with it. Mm-hmm. And so, as awkward as it is for me, I'm trying to embrace it and learn how to do it. Yeah, I think too, like for me, one of the things is I find crafts and activities. So like you're talking about food. I love cooking and baking. But it is sometimes kind of annoying to cook or bake for one. Oh, yes. But I found I like having meals ready for me. So like making a large pot of soup, I don't struggle with now. It took me some time, but it... Like, making a large pot of soup doesn't stro- make me struggle because now I have food for the week instead of every night having to figure out what I'm having for dinner. Right. Choosing to see it in a different way. I like that. Right. And then, you know, hobbies. Like, I like to craft and do things with my hands. So, the last couple of months, I've been doing these, like, this paper craft. Like, making envelopes and stuff. And it's keeping my hands busy. And so, like, but keeping my mind occupied... I'm not like, so it's keeping my anxiety at bay and it's, I'm, you know, I'm doing something. So it's like, I'm pr- productive, you know, which is People writing like as well. Stitch cross and, stitch um, and sew and, and, yeah. and, you know, do all the crafty, crafty yeah. things. Crafting, you know, of any kind, which is something you are not. You don't no. like that. No. Mm-mm. So for you, you drive that, me to complete distraction. Right. Yeah. So for you, like you say that though, I bet you anything, if you picked up a hobby that you wouldn't feel as alone Maybe. because you have, I do like do. those adult coloring books. Well, those are kind of yeah. cool. And I do color them and turn them into cards. Right. So, you know, and, I, and I've encouraged some other people recently of, you know, like, Hey, you know, like when you're sitting here by yourself, you know, you could, you know, pick up a coloring book or call a friend and you know, other things like calling communicating with people because even if you're like physically alone in your house that doesn't mean you can't communicate i'm you know one thing i'm grateful with the pandemic i'm grateful for other things too but one of the things is you know we the um we got social media but also the video chatting became a lot more easy to do thank goodness people are accepting it more readily because so many people didn't even want to engage in it and then like you know we've got facebook messenger there's zoom you know, Microsoft Teams, uh, GoToMeeting. There's all these different things that people are using to communicate with. And so, like, families are connected again that were disconnected during the pandemic. It's not the same as being actually physically together, but it gives you an opportunity to at least, you know, have something. You know, it's interesting. I loved the other day, um, you know, when I was coming over here, I rode Mm -hmm. the bus, and I loved that... Um, my oldest son and his wife called me up there over in New York and it was so great to be able to kind of feel connected to them in a way Mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have without that video call. You know what I mean? So yes, Mm -hmm. technology in that way can actually be very helpful and less, you know, helping me deal with that loneliness. But I'll caveat that with... Anyone over the age of about 60, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. <laughs> I say that phrase mildly to mean there is a lot of seniors, because I work with seniors, so I see it a lot more, but there's a lot of seniors who cannot understand a computer or a f- smartphone, so they are feeling more lonely and more disconnected because they aren't able to communicate in those ways. Yes. So for those of you who have grandparents and older parents and neighbors and friends who are, you know, older and may not communicate on those kind of things, you know, think about them. So as a way to cope with your loneliness, help somebody else out with theirs. Which is great because that leads into the what, the next thing I was going to talk about, which is volunteering. Mm-hmm. Volunteering is a great way. When you can get outside yourself yeah. and... And serve somebody, help somebody. When just that alone, yeah. I mean, and then again, the science mm-hmm. and the mental health behind it, the endorphins and the yeah. all the good stuff that go with volunteering, you know, and being a part of the community that you live in, yeah. and being a part of your kingdom family, right. and serving on a mission team, and mm-hmm. you know, all those other things. Yep, you know, and, volunteering is right. amazing. 
It is. And it, and it helps not only you feel like you're doing something productive, but you're also helping somebody else out. And I, you know, recently, like, I'm very good when it comes to technical stuff, like computer stuff and whatnot. So recently somebody reached out and said, hey, you make these really cool flyers. Can you teach me how to do it? So like the other night, I shared my screen on Zoom. They watched me create the flyer that I was going to make. And they followed kind of along with what I was doing. And they're like, wow, this is, you know, really cool. And thanks for showing me and stuff. I'm like, I love doing that because not only am I sharing what I know and wanting to, but they're learning something they didn't know. And then it's an activity. Yep. Fellowship was had. Yep. We were talking about more than just that specific thing. Activity. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, I think you know, in that regard, that's too. And like, I remember I also mentioned that specific person, you know, this coming weekend, you know, I'll be driving you partially part of the way back to where you're lit, where you live. You know, some, you have a friend meeting you in the middle and, um, they're like, Oh wow. You know, that's really nice of you. But I'm like, and they're like I'm like, well, I like to drive. And I'm like, yeah, I do love to drive. I, I love driving. But I think it's also too, like, what was I going to do that rest of the day after you leave? Right. Sit on my butt, watch TV. Not that those are bad things. You're allowed to have downtime. Amen. But, you know, what was I going to do when I came home at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Right. Probably do X, Y, and Z, you know, sit. And you knew it, that it was really helpful to me. Right. Because, you know. Yeah, and, you know, and I, I wanted to make it possible for you to come over here because I know you lo enjoy coming over here. Yes. You know, you could have taken the bus back, <clears throat> yeah. but, but it would have... It was not allowed you, <clears throat> right. It wouldn't have allowed you to have the fellowship at church that you wanted and stuff like that. So right. it was either, you know, leave early or, yeah. you know, or stick around and then drive you home. And so I'm like, I'll just drive. I mean, it's not that big a deal. And it's, you know, I have a hybrid now. I had to get a new car this summer. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a little easier on gas than my 20 mile and a gallon SUV, which I miss. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so like... Volunteer is definitely a huge thing, and I, and I, you know, in the, in the Bible, I can't tell you how many times, because I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it is several times, Jesus was alone to go pray. Right. So, even Jesus took time alone. went off alone. alone. Went away from the crowds. Right. You know. And then, you know, he would come back sometimes and yell at them for sleeping while he was praying. Other times, he would that would refresh him. So even Jesus was often refreshed yeah. when he was alone. Yes. So loneliness, you know, you hear the word lonely and you think poor, sad, but other times, you know, loneliness is a positive thing for people too, because you can recharge in ways that you don't like Lori, you know, introverts and extroverts slightly recharge differently, but oh, I think everybody in one way or another will recharge a little bit on without I um, wrote on their own. a whole wrote a paper a whole paper on being unplugged and how you know I found wonderful value in it and it felt so good to sit in that kayak in the middle of this lake which I'd never done before just hear crickets and you know just to have this peace and the calm and the water was calm and it was so it was very surreal for me and wonderful and I thought I need to recreate that type of peace, that type of, you know, um, so that... And that, in a that, way, is kind of meditation, too. Right. And so I can do it. I can, you know, find value in it, if you will. There's another big thing that people bring up. Now, it's not for me, and you can probably share more on this than I can, but... Um, and please don't hate me if you're listening, but I'm not the biggest animal lover. <laughs> um, I, I can't, I, I have had a few pets in my life that I found value and I don't, I don't not like animals. I just am, am not the animal lover. Many of my friends are, and, um, most of the time can deal without them. For me, they represent... I don't know, a lot of work and a lot of, and I, I'm a bit of a OCD clean freak and there's hair and things and, and the animals are animals. So, um, anyway, enough said, um, you can talk about animals being your friend. I love animals. Um, dogs and cats have this keen sense of like, oh, well, you know, and I think loneliness is not just for humans. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, the animal kingdom, if you look at it, there's prides of lions, a murder of crows. That's the, what a group of crows is called. A flock. A flock of birds, you know. Animals are together. There's very, there's, there are animals that are solo creatures, but most of them need to be in a group. Pods of whales. Right. Um, right. Dolphins, they're socialized. They're social creatures. And you're so, we're, yeah, we are social creatures. And so, you know, animals have a keen sense when an animal needs something, but they can also sense it in humans. So that's why you see even a lot of men and women who've come back from like the wars and need a uh, service animal companion and service is a animal. companion animal because they've recognized that being alone for them brings them back to a bad time in their life and they need the companionship. Um, also in the hospitals, they're using them in therapies for therapy patients. Animals. And, yep. um, There's even therapy horse, if you look that up. That's right. Cool. Yes, I think that's a pretty amazing thing. I do like horses. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like pets, I, you know, growing up, I had, you know, I had a dog and a cat in the house. I had a hamster. We had fish. And then, you know, when those pets passed away, um, I, we went quite a while without another dog, but we, my mom, my mom had never gone more than like a month without a cat. And I think on the, th the fourth week of our first cat passing away that I remember really clearly, um, we, she got another cat, which was the same color as the other one. So she's very into orange cats, but we went quite a while without a dog. The dogs are just, uh, cats can be on their own. They're a little more, um, independent, but dogs definitely need more attention um and and you're right you know they do have a lot and you know i would love to have a cat um but i just i know you know clean up and i grew up in a house where like our cat was an out indoor outdoor cat like he went outside and he went to this his did his business outside he didn't need a litter box but in the area that i live in here i would need to have a litter box and i'm like i don't want to clean that litter and box. where would you put it <laughs> and where would i put it because <laughs> my saying. bathroom is pretty small <laughs> so just you know things like that so you know pets is a great thing and it is you know shows responsibility and stuff but it also when you have them you know a dog will sense when you need to be you know have a companion and a cat too and you know cats though are more independent and when they want the attention they'll let you know even if you don't want the attention so eh. yeah. <laughs> but I think I think animals are great but you know that's not for everybody as well. Right. So, um, some of the research that I did on this topic also brought up the fact of just simply moving mm -hmm. or changing your atmosphere. Yep. So, um, and I, I've talked with my counselor about this. Sometimes, you know, I was really struggling one day and I was sitting out in my sunroom and I was like, okay, just get up, open the front door, walk outside. So I threw my slippers on cause I didn't want to, you know, I'm like, Okay, I'm not getting all, you know, I'm not going out for like a regular walk or I got just Did you trying. say you put slippers on? I did. Well, because I didn't want to, I wanted to walk on the grass and it might be wet. So I didn't want to have wet socks, you know, so I put slippers on. Yeah. I know I don't normally do that. Um, I'm trying to be a good diabetic who's not supposed to be running around barefoot because I would normally just run around barefoot, but it's a bad thing now. So, um, so I threw on some slippers and I noticed that, and it was weird. I walked around the front and I'm in the grass area and, and I, I saw some trash and I picked up the trash and then I went and looked at a little flower. And then I think that was one of the cool days where all of a sudden the, the cars going by on the road are honking and there's the wild turkeys that love to come out. Um, by my place, you know, and so I went back in the house, grabbed my camera and, you know, took some pictures and whatever. And all of a sudden, guess what? I wasn't lonely. And I would, all I'd done was walk out the front door, picked up some trash and then took pictures of turkeys. And it was like, I was able to get out of that rut, get out of that mm -hmm. cycle, that spinning that you get kind of stuck in. So just simply moving, you know, and then I... I was joking with you this morning that my new caregiver, she is always um, laughing because she says she knows 
I'm trying to be more physically active, right? So I've got the little Fitbit watch thing and I'm trying oh, to, yeah. so I have to, uh, I don't have to, I'm choosing to, oh, my counselor would be so proud of me. I am choosing to take at least 250 steps every hour, right? And so my Fitbit watch will notify me towards the end of the hour how many steps I have left to accomplish that goal within the hour. So then I'll be like wandering around my house or dancing around my house, especially if I'm alone, which is a good thing. Um, I can do whatever I want, you know. Um, I So exercise. And, and so then again, if you're able to, one of the key things that can combat loneliness too is exercise. Actually physically exercising. You get the happy endorphins, you get the all the stuff that goes with the physical release of exercising. I'm not quite to that stage. I'm not gonna be, you know, going to the nearest gym or anything, right. but you know. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, activity, you know, getting up and getting moving, you get your body flowing because you know, for you know, anyone that's stationary or sedentary for a long period of time, the um your joints, all the, I don't know, all the... Well, your ligaments, your muscles, yeah, everything. I was going to say, all the lubrication that's in your joints kind of gets stiff if you yes. don't move around. Yes. So the more you're active, the more those kind of flow and help your joints move, and then things don't hurt as bad. Um, so, yeah, exercise is, so yeah, you know, exercise is definitely a big one, um, you know, and I think, but it doesn't have to be like doing an actual exercise. It could be from going from watching TV to standing up and going and doing the dishes yep. and then coming and sitting down, you know, and uh, you don't have to do everything all at once either, you know, and, and, you know, and it may take being organized and saying, these are the tasks I want to complete today. You know, you can get them all done in an hour or you can get them done throughout Spend the day. Some out. Yeah, you know, and, and and that's you know okay too, and you know you don't have to per se have to have an organized life, but even if you just know from like okay when you wake up in the morning and you have a doctor's appointment and you have two things to do and then the rest is free, you know what can you do in those that time, you know, you know, yeah. and what can you fill it with to keep you active mentally, physically, spiritually emotionally yes so that kind of leads me to the idea of learning something new mm -hmm. so that is a way to mentally um and sometimes physically because it involves moving but changing that atmosphere so taking a class um i've really been i've i've talked about it for a while now i really do want to Take like a, a cooking class, you know, just <laughs> do something different, right? Because I, I'm trying to embrace being in the kitchen. Um, it's just not my, my natural happy place. We'll just put it that way. So I'm really trying to learn in that way and grow in that way. So I'm, I, I want to invest in that because I want to show myself that there's value in it and that it's important. And so, but, you know, taking a course, sometimes you don't even have to pay the money of, um, you know, like uh, credits for college. You can do what's called auditing a class, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and I know a lot of retired or disabled people who do this where you'll audit a class you're not actually so you don't actually get a grade yeah. um because it's not about that it's just about going and learning something new yeah. you know um as i said i'm i'm listening to audible more i'm listening to music more mm -hmm. trying to listen to things that will educate me um and give me new knowledge and challenge my thoughts and you know so i don't get stuck you know um yeah, I've been listening to, as you heard last night, I'm listening to the um, listener's version of the Bible with the 500 different actors and, you know. Listening is might be a stretch considering you fell asleep after the first half an hour. Yeah, okay. Yes, and but I got a half an hour in. But it went the whole night. <laughs> yes, it did. It I did. woke up but three woke times up. and I heard it. <laughs> in my room to the living room, I could hear it. <laughs> the scriptures were bothering you. <laughs> no, just hearing all those random voices in your normally quiet house. Yes. 
Yeah, I can oh. snore in my house and I don't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always like to, um, and w- you know, kind of that faithful note, you know, um, definitely faith can help you combat your loneliness, can help you not feel alone. And, um, I, again, because I really like to, you know, find a scripture that, that brings that home to me. So one of my favorites that I found this week as I was working through this stuff, I just want to get to the right. So in Isaiah chapter 58, um, in verse 11. And again, I'm reading from the NLT, the New Living. Um, It says, the Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. And, oh gosh, 12 is great too. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Think about that as like our lives sometimes. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. So I just feel like that really complements that well. But I I know with my faith when I'm allowing the Spirit to move and work in my life and and it, I do feel feel a lot like a well-watered garden. I feel taken care of. I feel cherished. I don't feel so alone because I'm not, because the spirit is with me when I'm in tune with it. And, and I don't have to be afraid or fearful or, you know, all of those other things really feels like it helps me combat with that. So again, for me, faith being such a, a huge piece of, of my life. So yeah. Yeah. I was thinking too, as we were talking, you know, in, even in the great commission that, um, we were given in Matthew, um, about, um, from Jesus about going and making disciples of all nations. Um, the last line, you know, in, uh, verse 20, it says, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay. So it's an, e- it's a good reminder, you know, that, you know, you've always got Jesus with you. He's with you till the end of the age. I love it. That's very comforting, at least for me. So I think we're wrapping it up. I think this has been a good, yeah. a good, another good episode. One of those heavy topics, but I felt like we, we didn't concentrate too much on the depressing part of it. But again, you know, yeah, please, please, please get help with it. If yes. you need to. Yeah. Like Lori said, you know, as a friendly reminder, you know, what we talked about here don't diagnose yourself with it, no. you know, and it, this should not replace, you know, conversations with mental health. Um, if you are struggling in, you know, an aspect of what we discussed, you know, please, please seek a counselor, a doctor, or a medical professional for help. And, you know, just remember you're not alone. Um, but Satan wants us to always think that. So just be mindful of that. Thank you for listening. And this episode is available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as Behind the Mask PC. If you don't use social media, you can always email us at BehindTheMaskPC at gmail.com. Feel free to review us on Anchor, leave feedback on the platform you listen to us on, or message us through our social media or email because we'd love to hear what you think. If there is a topic you'd like to hear us talk about, feel free to message us and we'll see about making it happen. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as EJ8302. And if you'd like to keep these episodes coming, you can also monetarily support us by visiting anchor.fm slash behind the mask PC slash support. On behalf of the ladies and myself, thank you for listening and we will talk to you next time.